Hey you guys, welcome back to part two of three sessions of the Lilac Siamese. And today we'll just continue to build up those layers and work on these delicate, subtle uh, gradations in this cat's fur. Let's get started. Now I'm gonna work kind of under the cat's chin and underneath his cheek area. And I'm gonna get all this area wet. I'm using my Alvera custom net you can use any mop brush that holds a lot of water to get large areas wet. I'm getting everything wet. <clears throat> Painting carefully along the top of his ear though because I don't want, there's a white area in his ear that I don't want to get wet. And I always paint my clear water well beyond the boundaries of where I think I'm going to work. And I think I'm just going to work along this cheek area, but you never know. And there I go in and you can see if you look in the reference photo, the, the area under his cheek and his chin where it's a crease, it's a little bit warmer than the areas that are lit by the light. And so I put more burnt sienna in those areas because this is a warmer or more yellow, more burnt sienna, less blue area under his cheek. So there's more burnt sienna in my mix and just a little bit of ultramarine blue. And again, this is another part of mapping in an area too. I'm getting in that main shape of his face there so that later I can go in and refine that. using my Simply Simmons brush. Now I'm going to work on this kitty's ear and what I'm going to do first is get it wet with clear water and as you notice I paint a lot like I would with paint. I go in really delicately and make actual fur textures with the clear water so that when I drop the paint in it kind of rivulets into that wet area and um, creates texture. And now I'm going in and putting in some milk consistency paint, dropping it right into that wet area. It's a combination of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, heavy on the ultramarine side. And I might have put some cerulean in there too, just so that everything matches, because later I am going to use some cerulean blue to um, add some pretty highlights. To this cat and I'm using my Simply Simmons brush and I actually recorded this back in February 2020 so by now I would um, I, now I have a uh, silver black velvet brush that I would probably use instead it has such a great point and since this video was made my Simply Simmons has frayed and it's a cheap brush it probably wasn't more than I don't know five or six dollars so uh, I can't use it anymore because it's kind of split. And um, so any brush that you have though that has a really good point would be good for making small little detailed fur textures like this in the ear. It's Sunday brunch day, y'all. And then I'm going in with tea to, mostly tea I would say, in the little areas outside the ear. And this cat is a very light colored cat, so a lot of the textures on its fur had to be really delicate and just uh, less is more. And I used a lot of tea consistency paint to create the little areas of fur detail. And 
I'm looking at my reference photo quite frequently. Remember to look at your reference photo a lot so you make sure that you're getting the texture of the hair going in the right direction and that you're in general getting everything where it belongs. And I'm going to continue to build up the darker little areas of the nose. There's not a lot to do, but I did want to make sure everything was just right. I think that's the eye I just put in. It's hard to tell. It's that the cat's right, our left eye was a little lighter. And you can use artistic license if you feel like something needs to be darker than it is in the reference photo, just to make everything make sense, like that eye. I'm not sure if I go back in and darken that later or not. And then when I work on dry paper like this, and you see me do this a lot in recent videos, uh, if the paper is dry and I still want soft edges on the little tiny stroke I made, I'll go and I'll dab, dab, dab it with my finger. And that's really an effective way to lightly, subtly soften tiny little strokes if you're being really nitty gritty picky. <laughs> and for this, it was a commission. So I was trying to be really picky and delicate with this cat. Okay, it went off camera, so I'm thinking I just picked up some cerulean blue. That looks very much like cerulean blue, and I have my cerulean blue in a side little top that I use, and um, I just thought the cerulean blue would be a really delicate, light color to kind of glaze over parts of that cat, this cat, and that's what I'm doing here. So I just picked up some cerulean blue, and now I'm glazing it lightly in some areas where the cat's face is cooler, i.e. bluer, to give it some really pretty um, highlights of the cerulean color. A lot of times if you make a stroke and you don't like it, you can just pick it right back up on smaller little detail strokes like this. Because this cat is so delicately colored, very light, and it would have been easy to just swish on some color and call it done, but I just really wanted to bring out the beautiful little intricate details in this cat. Since there's not a lot of color to put in this cat, I wanted to focus on all the pretty little nuances of colors in his coat, which have um, nuances of browns, grays, and blues. So instead of being able to use darker colors to describe this cat, I used a lot more details to really play up the delicate, the delicate look of this cat. So that means a lot of glazes of tea consistency paint, which means you paint with a little bit of tea consistency paint let it dry and then glaze on top of that again to keep building up the textures until you get it where you think it looks really good. And again here I'm making sure that I follow the contours of his fur looking closely at the reference photo because the cheekbones of cats really give them a lot of character and you wanna make sure that you're getting those cheekbones the right shape and the right proportion in the right place. So just look really carefully at your reference photo when you're painting these areas. And now I'm 
putting in the little whisker dots, which are so, I don't know what it is about them, but they always add so much interesting character to a cat. Just putting in clear water because I want this next passage to be soft when I put in color. I want it to be really subtle and light. And you can see I have a little bit more burnt sienna on my brush at this place. And if you look at the reference photo, you'll see different parts of the cat are warmer or cooler on his face. So the more that you can match that warmer or cooler, the more realistic your cat will look. And I'm just going in with clear water. I'm going to work on that ear. Maybe. <laughs> I'm just putting in very delicate glazes. To capture the soft light in this cat. going in. Now you can see I have more burnt sienna in my tea consistency paint on my brush and I'm putting in the darkest area of underneath the underneath of his ear and the color in his ear changes from the tip being more brown and then it goes down and it gets a little bit grayer and then there's really dark gray areas down in here and again you can see once again, I'm getting my lights, mediums, and darks in this ear. But the first thing I do is I just block in the major shapes, which is that triangle inside shape. How's your painting coming along? By the way, I'd love to see it. Don't forget to post updates on my watercolor workshop page. And uh, when you do post pictures that you've done from my paintings, I always appreciate it. If you tag me and um, let your viewers know that it was from a tutorial or from one of my paintings. There's a lot of really complex shapes in the back of this cat's ear. So again, try to switch your brain into artist mode where you're not thinking to yourself, I'm painting an ear, but think in terms of I'm painting this triangle that's right here under this ear flap. And then this part of the ear has a long, um, thin triangular shape that goes up like this. So look at the shapes in your reference photo and try to paint what is there, not what you think you see, but what you really see. And if you look at the reference photo in terms of shapes, you'll be a lot more successful at doing that. And while this is still wet, I go in and put very dark points in. Just so those dark areas don't just look like I pasted them on, they kind of merge in with the moist paint underneath them. Ears have so much character. more ultramarine blue in my mix here because the ears are a cooler gray color. I'm getting the little 
fur details that are really dark because they're in a little cavity kind of on his ear. So when the light hits it, it makes it a little bit darker. My palette is dry, so I'm going to activate it by spraying it just to soften my colors a little bit so they're more usable. And I think I'll put a little bit of a spray on my painting too because I'm going to paint this kitty's fur and I just want it to be soft. So I don't need it to be crazy wet, so I'm just gonna blot a little bit. I just want a little bit of moisture there on my painting. And I'm gonna go in with my trusty wisp brush. These are called wisp brushes, but um, they're great for grass textures and fur textures. And I'm gonna go in with a mix of cerulean blue. Where is my cerulean blue? I'm experimenting with cerulean blue. I, it has not earned a place on my palette, but I'm going to start playing with it more and more. So you will probably see it in a few of my upcoming paintings, this one included. And I just want to see what I think of it before I give it a spot on my palette. There are some places on my palette that I don't use as much like this indigo. I haven't been using that. And these two greens over here, they're darker greens. I haven't been using those as much, but I do use them when I mix my, my special dark green mix. So I don't know. I'm not sure where I would put it. But I'm considering adding cerulean blue to the mix. And the main thing I like about cerulean blue is actually that it is a pale color. It's considered an earth color, which means it kind of dulls down other colors when it added to them. And that may sound bad, but it's not if you are trying to get um, more delicate more natural colors, it can be a good thing. So, I'm gonna mix some ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and the cerulean to get a tea consistency on my brush. I'm gonna feel, you see my paper's already dried. I'm gonna spray it again, because I want this to be soft. Oops. <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna add more burnt sienna. Um, there's two colors in this cat's fur. One is a gray color and one is a browner color. So I'm gonna go over here too and make a grayer puddle. So this will be my gray puddle and this will be my warmer puddle. How about that? All right, so he has really delicate markings. And I'm gonna get some paint off my brush. I want this to be soft. I'm just delicate, delicately building layers. And I'm looking at shapes of things a lot here.
I'm keeping a very light mix of paint in my brush right now because this cat's markings are so delicate. And the colors are really changing a lot as I move across his face. So I want to try to capture that as much as possible. Just to add some interest, I'm going to put some pure cerulean in here just because this is a piece of art. And I think that little pop of cerulean right in there will add interest. I do it because I can. <laughs> um, one technique that I like to use, I'll, sh I'll do that now, is I'm painting on dry paper with a tea consistency in my brush. So I've got that, it's still wet. Very quickly I go in, put some clear water on my brush, shake it out so it's not dripping, and then go back into this and just soften. I just got all of the moisture out of my brush by wringing it out. And I'm just going in there and softening, softening most of the edges of those furs that I just painted in. And you want to try to get as much done while the paper is wet. I'm continuing to work here on just the small little um, or the delicate, I should say, the delicate layers of glaze that I'm using to build up the textures and build up the values in this cat's face. And I'm using this Wisp brush. And it's by Royal and Langnickel. On the brush it says it's a half inch size, 13 millimeter, and they make all different sizes. And you can, if you watch me use this brush, sometimes I will paint with it flat like that or on the side or dab at it at the, with the very tips of it or do a, a, a motion like that with the, this part of the handle of the brush almost parallel to the table or parallel to the painting at least. So it just depends on what texture you're going for and you can do little exercises, side exercises to play with the textures that you can create, the many textures you can create with this brush. But it's really good for painting little fur textures like what we're doing in this cat's face. I'm going to go in with my clear water, soften up all these edges. And I'm using clear water after I put in some of these textures, especially when I'm painting on dry paper like this. It can start looking a little harsh, almost like cross hatching looks really harsh, but this is a cat with soft fur. So you can put in some, some glazes of actual color. And then if it looks a little bit too harsh, you can go back in, let it dry a little tiny bit with clear water and paint right back over it with a whisk brush here and there. I'm going to darken just a little bit with some cerulean blue this highlight on the nose. I don't want it a pure white. Get some of the water out of my brush. And then 
just with some very light tea consistency, just put in a few hmm, very delicate fur details through here. You can go back in with the clear water just here and there and paint with clear water to kind of merge and meld parts of the brush strokes that you just put down. All right, and you can see how I change the angle of my brush as I work, depending on um, how dark I want the stroke um, and depending on what effect that I want to get with the brush. There's a lot you can do with these wisp brushes. You can see how I turn the brush. If I need just a few little hairs, I'll turn it on the side just so I can get a few little hairs. If I want a big swath of fur, I can turn it back and use the whole brush. All right, now I'm going and working in the body of the cat. I've got more burnt, burnt sienna in my tea consistency mix now. I'm working on dry paper and I've got tea consistency um, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue in my brush with a little bit more burnt sienna than ultramarine blue to the ratio and I'm just making some of the fur textures in on his shoulder and behind his face here. Being careful of course to continue to look at my reference photo to make sure that I'm getting the direction of his furs going the right way because cat's fur um, contours can change quickly. All right, you guys, that's it for the second session of the Lilac Kitty. And in the next session, we will finish up and add those final little details to really make this kitty sing. And I'll see you then. Bye, you guys.